Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about some changes that I made to Sergeant Cuddles. I have a video series, a three-part video series, where I go over the design and kind of the ideas and how I built Sergeant Cuddles, which is a um, one-pound combat robot. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the changes I made after fighting him. So in that video, I talk about kind of some of the design decisions that I made, but that was before I ever fought him in a competition, and I learned a lot after that competition. And last week there was Spark Fun's AVC, which is the Autonomous Vehicle Competition that they hold every year. And this year, as well as last year, they had some um, combat robotic stuff there. So I brought Sergeant Cuddles, entered him into it, and ended up winning first place based on a lot of the changes that I made. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the design flaws that he had, some of the things that I changed, and then also in the future, some of the things I want to change further that I learned from this last competition. There were three major improvements that I needed to make on Sergeant Cuddles. The first was the drive system. I used these um, little uh, Pololu wheels and um, Servo City motors, and both of those are quite nice. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later, but unfortunately in the very first version of Cuddles, he really couldn't drive around very fast. He was just kind of like slowly going around the arena. And with ant weight and beetle weight, you need to be really fast. Everyone else is super fast, and you need to be able to maneuver quickly or you're just gonna lose flat out. So that was a big issue. Um, the second issue I had was the motor staying in place. In the original Sergeant Cuddles, I had these um, kind of little plastic tabs that fit in place and they didn't really work out, so I had to come up with a different solution. Lastly, I needed to change the speed on the actual weapon. Theoretically, this drum will get up to about 10,000 RPM, which is way too fast. It'll just be a blur and you'll never catch an edge off anything. So it'll just kind of grind on everything and they'll never really hit anyone. So I need to kind of adjust that. And also I had no real fine tuning on it either. So uh, those are the three things I need to change. Um, so let's start with the drive motors. The first thing I needed to do was to disassemble Sergeant Cuddles and get to the drive motor so I could start replacing some components and really seeing what all the damage was. This is um, what Cuddles looked like right after the Robo Games competition and he was pretty beat up and had some damage here and there. Um, as you can see the top armor is pretty well chipped up and I'm going to go through and replace a lot of these components with new ones that were damaged. So once we get inside, you can see the old way of holding the motors in place. Um, they just have these um, laser cut tabs that are cut out of, I think it's like quarter inch or three eighths inch acrylic. And they were just kind of glued in place. And on the very first big hit, they would just get knocked loose. And then the motors would rise up a little bit and the wheels would no longer make contact with the ground. So that was a really big problem. I really did like that the motors were just kind of press fit in place, that was good. That really um, helped things out so that they kind of absorb the impact um, in the UHMW frame, but I need a better way to secure them in place. I'm also taking out the drum here. Um, I'm gonna end up switching chassis. I have a backup chassis that was in better condition. I just wanted to start out the competition with a nice fresh um, selection of parts here. So um, taking the drum out and getting the motor out and there's also a big chunk in the side of the motor taken out. So I wanted to replace that just in case. Um, the drum itself is actually relatively difficult to get out, which is kind of a, a nice design feature. It really just kind of presses in there and you have to bend the frame to get it in there. So it's really hard to knock that weapon loose and do any real damage to it. So that was kind of nice. And here's ultimately what Sergeant Cuddles looks like in component form. You can see all the screws, the two little motor holder thingies, the frame, the drum with the motor, the electronics, and then the armor. Um, so that's really all there is to it. Um, so let's go modify the frames. For the new design, instead of using the little plastic tabs that press fit and glued into the frame, I decided to make these little aluminum plates that would screw down into the frame instead. So I took some eighth inch thick aluminum stock, cut it on the bandsaw, cleaned it up a little bit on the sander, and then brought it over to the mill and um, just cut the two little holes in it and those would end up being the mounting holes later. 
and it was a pretty easy process. I just, you know, slapped it on the Tormach, and um, I think I might have just done it by hand. I don't think I did any G code for this, um, and I just kind of measured them. They don't really need to be all that precise, and I even drilled the holes a little bit bigger than they needed to, so it had a little bit of flex in it. And then um, chamfered it up, and um, it was time to modify the chassis to accommodate these new uh, metal plates. Here's a drawing from SolidWorks for the modifications that I'm doing. I'm basically just taking and machining two slots in there to accommodate these um, two little aluminum pieces instead of just the little pockets that are in there right now. So I just need to machine out those slots. Once I got the chassis set up inside the vise, I used the Tormach Passive Probe to find a couple coordinates on it. I use the outside as references here because once you clamp the chassis inside the vise, it tends to compress a little bit because it is kind of a flexible plastic. So I just referenced off the outside, manually jogged the mill to where I needed the channels to be, and I just ran the uh, machine by hand and just um, cut the channels and then kind of tested them for depth as I went. Machining the UHMW always leaves some little plastic scraps, so I just used a um, hobby knife to clean up some of those excess pieces, and then I test fit in the aluminum, use those as a guide to drill in holes into the chassis. I used an eighth inch drill bit, which um, works really well for the screws I was using. It gets a nice bite in there, and they don't strip out at all. They fit really tight. Um, so I did um, just kind of a test fit, and everything looked good. Now that the motor mounts are fixed, I need to choose a different motor. I'm using these micro gear motors I got from Servo City, and the motors have performed really well, but the RPM range really isn't that great. I was using a 50 to 1, which is a 460 RPM motor, and it was just way too slow, especially with the reduced traction and everything. When it was running you know, on a flat surface without the drum, it was okay. So I stepped up to these 30 to 1 ratio motors, which are 900 RPM, and it was a game changer. I went from being a relatively slow robot to actually being one of the faster in the competition. In some of the videos, you can actually hear people in the audience saying, oh wow, he's really fast. And so this different RPM really helped out a lot. And these little motors are fantastic. They're like 100 milliamps, um, just idle current and they're 1.6 amp stall current, so they work perfectly with the Fingertech ESCs, the uh, tiny ESCs, and um, yeah, just got these for like 10 bucks at Servo City, so highly recommend these guys for drive motors. The 900 RPM is fantastic. Other than that, all I needed to do was recalibrate the speed controller for the weapon motor. As I said before, the weapon motor goes up to about 10,000 RPM, which is not really useful. I like to run it probably about half speed, and previously the speed controller was calibrated so that when you had like half on the throttle, it would start moving and then it would instantly just kind of go all the way up to full speed, which really wasn't useful. So I just um, recalibrated the speed controller so I actually had manual control of it and I kept the um, knob, you know, somewhere around half and that turned out to be really good. One of the improvements that I was considering for Cuddles was some kind of self-riding mechanism. I was going to do some sort of servo, you know, on top that would flip him over. But when I was um, testing him out here in the garage, I realized that when he was upside down, it was actually really easy to flip him over just by using the excess power of the drum. I said that you don't want to use 10,000 RPM because it isn't good at hitting, but it's really good at flipping him over. So when he's upside down, all I have to do is hit the drum at like 100% and it will almost always flip right over. So that was actually kind of fun to figure out just from getting him upside down on accident here in the garage, putting throttle all the way to the max and then just boom, flipping him right over. So I actually completely abandoned the idea of anything self-riding and um, actually these little eyeballs, the googly eyes, do help when he's riding upside down. It gives a little bit more um, angle to get the weapon more on the ground and it flips over a little quicker because the googly eyes actually help him flip up. So that's kind of nice. So what improvements do I have for the next competition? Well, first off, the googly eyes, they're going to stay. The chassis is definitely going to stay. Um, the chassis can take a huge amount of abuse, and you can see there's huge gouges in the side, huge gouges over there, 
and it bounced off the walls just innumerable times during the competition and it just kept driving. The only thing that ever really broke was um, this power switch. I used one of those FingerTech power switches and it actually snapped completely in half. And what I'm gonna do next year to fix that is these screws that go into the side of the chassis, I'm gonna make them longer and then actually go through the power switch and clamp it on both sides to stop both sides from separating because there's just a lot of hits that happen and the switch just kind of exploded. But it stayed on because the um, set screw stayed inside of it, so I didn't have any issues with that. Um, next, the wheels. The Servo City wheels or the Servo City motors, I really like. The Pololu wheels, not so much. The tires tend to come off and in one of those really big hits, it slid across the arena and the tire just came right off. Um, in my other robot, Kamikaze, I actually glued the wheels on and it helps a little bit, but I'm gonna go with a um, solid core wheel that the tread can't come off like that. Um, in addition to that, everything else is pretty good. I think I'm gonna upgrade to a slightly higher power motor. Um, this is a really cheap motor. I think it's only like six or seven dollars and it's about 100 watts. There are some nicer motors that have just come out um, you know, in the last year or two. You can get like a 200, 250 watt motor in here. I have the speed controller to support it. I have the battery life to support it. So I'm gonna go with a higher powered motor and slightly lower RPM. The other thing I'm thinking of is um, switching out the drum to a beater bar, which is just a flat plate that spins around. It gives me a little bit more surface area to actually hit things because these um, little screws that are on here don't always catch, and so it takes a lot of hits to get a good catch. So um, I'm thinking about switching over to a beater bar for that. But other than that, um, Cuddles worked really well, and I'm pretty happy with um, the performance of it. That's about all I have to say about the rebuild for Sergeant Cuddles. Be sure to check out one of my next videos where I'm going to be doing a teardown of my three-pound combat robot, Kamikaze. <laughs>